great upheaval in politics or government never comes alone. The cycle has been repeated many times over, all around the globe. Propaganda leads to radicalism, leads to rebellion, leads to new order. And all the while, media continues to be created. This media is both a reaction to a single circumstance and the highly individual production of subcultures. The most effective pieces in this progression will utilize the innovation of its predecessors as it tackles a historical topic. In Argentina, Marcelo Pinheiro's Kamchatka takes a modern look at the panic surrounding the junta disappearances and uses elements of new Argentine cinema to observe a period piece through contemporary eyes. Struggling since the early 50s with the divide between leftist guerrillas and the right-wing military, revolutionary groups operated for years between the early 1960s and the advent of the junta in 1981, protesting the refusal of the government to grant the working class certain promised economic and political liberties. A coup d'etat in 1976 led to the rise of the junta, whose three-year-long crackdown on political and potential dissidents led to the arrest, killing, or forced disappearance of an estimated 30,000 people. The movie Kamchatka is set in the late 1970s after the junta gained power, where anyone perceived to have leftist leanings was in danger. A family's choice to move to the country, normally a highly personal situation, was suddenly a political issue with radical connotations. However, Kamchatka was filmed in 2002, not in the 1970s. It lacks both the propagandistic nature of dictatorial cinema and the reactionary tone of films immediately following, most of which were an attempt to reconcile the shattered ruins of a beloved country with the pain and injustice it had just suffered. The economic crisis of the late 20th century shifted the desire of Argentine filmmakers towards showing a harsh reality. The economy got worse, crime grew, the cities got dirtier, and the government became less able or less willing to meet the demands of their people. Suddenly, no one wanted to watch movies about a utopian Argentina. They wanted to see a country they recognized. Comparatively, Kamchatka is tempered and quiet, although no less critical towards Argentina. The blindness brought on by the narrator's youth paints a picture much calmer than others. Brief reference to the government, disappearances, and leftism establish a background, but the protagonist of the story is Harry, a ten-year-old boy. What he cannot understand is left up to the viewer. Harry's point of view grounds the story in seemingly meaningless reoccurrences by picking and choosing the parts of his life that are important to both the mind of a child and that of an adult. His brother wets the bed often, which is something that he has to clean up. His mother smokes, which he sees more regularly as the movie progresses. A board game that he plays for entertainment represents something much different to a viewer with political context. In this way, the film is deeply rooted in everyday existence, but also hints at something larger, something beyond a 10-year-old's comprehension. The choice to have a child at the forefront of the film freed up space for a mostly objective view of the more dynamic characters, the unnamed mother and father. Both of these characters seem to suffer from the same dream of escape prominent in many contemporary Argentine films, but Kamchatka, with its slow plot, keeps the restlessness outside of the narrator's point of view and hides it in the mother and father, both of whom go back and forth from the country to the city. Since the dictatorship, Buenos Aires has undergone a heavy change in image, from a cosmopolitan and desirable city to a dangerous, always-in-motion urban center. The children are torn from their home, the city where they previously felt safe, into a lonely mockery of their normal life. Constant ties back to the parents negate the idea of protection. Anyone familiar with the thousands of disappearances during the dictatorship realizes they might as well be wearing a target.
And yet this lingering fear goes unnoticed to Harry. What to him is family strife is, to us, a clear mark of something larger and more terrifying. This subtlety is a sign of new Argentine cinema, often known by a minimalist look. Emphasis on ordinary, everyday situations. A rejection of overarching political allegories. And a focus on the outer edge of society. Lo único que no cuenta es cómo hacía para escapar. Though Pinheiro gives his film the context and confidence to be undebatably Argentine, he breaks from all the standards set before him in his portrayal of the dirty war. He weaves post junta anger and relief with the 21st century realization that, years later, coming back isn't as simple as it seems. And he does this by following the story of a boy whose biggest concern is not winning the revolution, but winning a board game. It is not the violence, then, but the lack of it that is truly frightening. From the mouths of babes, indeed. <laughs>